Welcome to my installation tutorial for Thermimage J. If you have found the GitHub website, then you already know where this is. Uh, but what Thermimage J is, is a series of Image J macros functions that uh, are freely available that really harness a lot of Image J powers and, uh, anal and analytical powers. So some familiarity with how Image J works is required, but I'll try to walk you through the installation process here first. So most things you need are found here on the GitHub site, with the link on the top highlighted, and the readme file that pops up will walk you through all of the installation that should be necessary. But people use different have different operating systems, so sometimes these instructions work more easily on different operating systems. So the first thing you want to do is download Fiji or ImageJ. Fiji is a wrapper for ImageJ with a lot of the standard plugins that people use. Depending on your OS, you would download the appropriate version, usually the 64-bit version, and it requires um, Java runtime environment as well. If I'm on a Mac, so I would download the Mac OS version here and install according to their instructions, their default instructions. Usually, they will uh, instruct you to install it in a place on your computer that you have read-write access. So I put mine in the root folder, my username root folder here. Um, so Fiji actually gets installed as a folder on your computer. And it looks different from on different operating systems. Next, we need to install Exit Tool. This um, a wonderful little command line program written by Phil Harvey and available here on this site. Again, whatever operating system you're using, click and follow the appropriate instructions. Um, there are other alternatives. If you're more familiar with using Perl and other programming, you can install ver different versions of Exit Tool, but it does need to be on your computer and called from the executable environment within Im ImageJ, which is usually installed in your um, root folder or your path folder for, for your particular operating system. So it um, works nice and seamlessly on the Mac. It's an installed program that places it in the right folders. So follow those instructions. There may be some security issues with certain versions of Windows that trip people up. Usually you have to turn off your firewall or let it run a couple of times before it runs smoothly. FFmpeg is the next thing. This is important for some of the video conversions that uh, are included in ThermImageJ. So again, their website is not easy to interpret, but you want to go and select your operating system based on the image. I would go to Mac. The easiest just to go to this link here, static and shared builds. What it's going to do is give you a choice to help build what download you're going to create. Um, so clearly, you, you click your operating system here. Um, I would likely choose one that is an official release. I'm not quite sure if these are, I haven't looked enough into it, um, if these are experimental releases, ones that are currently in process, being tested. Um, there are no major um, highfalutin requirements for FFmpeg, but there's some base conversions that are in there that are helpful. So probably choose the 4.2. Point two or three, and then download. Click the download button. That'll be on your computer. Install according to the basic instructions. You need to know where you installed it because that might come up in the uh, when Fiji looks for it or when my macros look for it. You do need Perl installed. Now, luckily for Linux and Mac, it's usually included already. Uh, for Windows, you can choose a Strawberry Perl, Active State Perl. Main thing is you need to know where it's installed. So follow the instructions for one of those. Um, both work. Active State Perl, I think, is what I've put on Windows machines I have access to. Uh, finally, Byte Swapper is possibly required for some images. And uh, it's not essential, but it might help with some of the more, uh, more modern your cameras. You install, uh, download this class file, and they say, Put it into the plugins folder of your ImageJ install. So you go to your Fiji, 
find your plugins folder. And I've already done it, so there's a byte swapper.class file right here. You can look into what it's doing, it's essentially changing the endian, little to big endian order in different image file types have different saving conventions, and that can trip things up during the uh, conversion process. Uh, for, so that takes care of sort of the external installations. What is available on the GitHub site are basically a series of text files that are scripts. Um, one script file relies on Perl, and this is a, a split, a customized splitting file that basically cuts the video files up into their respective image frames and then rebuilds it um, using FFmpeg and some other NXF tool at the same time. Uh, the macro toolset, which is a text file, and uh, and then two LUTs, uh, lookup tables, that um, are basically called palettes when you do normal thermal imaging. So these are here in these links, or you can download the whole master zip file. And that comes here as some sample images if you want to, um, sorry, some, a sample zip file with some sample videos and thermal images. The tool set, but basically you need the tool set and the split file and the LUTs. And so those go into their respective folders. There's no, I don't have an automatic installation process because it's not my forte. Um, you would just copy these two LUTs into ImageJ's LUT folder right here. It'll add it to the list. Copy the split dot PL file into a scripts folder inside the Fiji install. And then the final thing is the macros. So the tool sets are basically a group of macros that all belong together. So in your Fiji install, you go to the macros folder, and inside that is a subfolder called tool sets, and that's where you copy the thermimagej.ijm file. Um, and once you've got those things installed, you can do some quick tests to see that the command line programs work, or you could just start running and see if, it, if they work on their own. Um, but here they are in operation. If you just type exit tool ver or which exit tool, as long as you don't get an error message, it's, these two commands suggest that it's installed properly. This is for Mac and, Un and Unix, Linux, um, similar commands in, in Windows. I'm not quite sure if they're the same. And for Perl, we get um, no error messages coming up, and which Perl or ver Perl give us feedback. We want to see that this you put the scripts in the right location. You have to actually query the script with uh, Perl. Uh, so we placed it in my root folder inside the Fiji app program, inside the scripts folder. And then you type the name of the split file. And it gives us at least a not nonsensical error message. It, um, this is a custom error message that I have in there just to specify that you have to give more information, but at least it's working. So we know that it found the file. Pathing issues are the main challenges that people are going to have, getting the right path, getting places in the right location. And then finally, ffmpeg version. And it gives us lots of information. It tells you what's installed and all the plugins that they've installed with it. So if that's working, you're ready to go. So you launch Fiji. And um, when you first launch it, Fiji, if you've never installed it before, it'll run through a series of requests to update, um, or to try to update various plugins. But do, let them happen. Shut it down, restart it again, and do that again. Click the update, go to the help menu, click the update command. It will scroll and scan through your plugins, and usually if you need updates, it will tell you. I've already done it, but it will give you a series of things here. The red ones mean I've modified them so it can't update them somehow. But you want what you want to do is go to manage update sites. And I've, there's all sorts of things that people have written, mostly cell and uh, my, microscopists and cell biologists that uh, support ImageJ. But somebody has created a, uh, a feed, uh, feed, uh, an FFmpeg import um, plugin that works quite well for 
some of the video conversions that I have inside Exif Tool. And the main reason is because one of the FLIR file types uses an, an old but reliable lossless grayscale compression that apparently uh, Fiji doesn't understand. So we have to install this FFmpeg uh, plugin. So you just click that. You tick, uh, make sure that's clicked. You hit update. Or, uh, what do you do? Hit close, and then usually they'll say apply changes here. I haven't made any changes. So once you apply your changes, wait a few minutes, and then reboot Fiji. Once you come back into Fiji, I'll reboot Fiji. The uh, on default or on boot, Fiji doesn't show up. Sadly, it's hiding behind the other windows. Here it is right here. And to activate the ThermImageJ um, macros, or to see them, what you want to do is go to this arrow and turn on ThermImageJ. They'll be there anyway, but at least you can see some of the, uh, the little icons shown here. Um, so in a future video, I'll demonstrate some of the functionality. This was just to get you uh, to the stage of installing it. A quick test to see that it's actually working would be to ask it to um, view a thermal image file, a FLIR file. So access a file. Um, just run one of these commands. So I'm choosing particular command that was the calibration command. It's going to scan the file for the calibration constants. And it comes up with a series of numbers here. I don't have good error messaging in the in the macro thing because it's mostly written for me. But if, <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It gives um, clearly catastrophic errors. Um, but if it works, then it gives you uh, feedback that's the information we want. So stay tuned for a future video. It would uh, we'll go in through in, uh, importing clear JPEGs, converting folders of JPEGs, importing seq files importing CSQ files and working with some of the other shortcuts that uh, I've included in this series of macros. Thank you for listening.